Hi, I'm re-uploading this video after re-editing to improve safety, thanks to some helpful comments on the first version. I truly appreciate your feedback. Now, please take a moment to read this safety disclaimer carefully. Thank you. So you got your beloved vintage camera, but the battery is completely dead. You could try your luck on eBay, but let's be real. After 30 plus years, it's nearly impossible to find one that still works. Maybe there's a modern replacement, if you're lucky. And in a lot of cases, it will be very expensive. So what now? Give up? Nope. In this video, I'll show you a simple and a specific method to rebuild a battery for the JVC GRC7 camcorder. There are tons of different camera models out there. However, the fundamentals I'll cover here apply to many different batteries for many many models of retro cameras, so I'm pretty sure you will find it helpful. I'm planning to turn this into a small video series focused on batteries, how to rebuild them from the scratch, and how to deal with the specific cases like Sony Infolithium batteries which needs a special mod, but it will depend on how much interest there is. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more. This will be a very basic tutorial. This is aimed at people who, like me a couple of years ago, had no clue where to even start. Before we start, an important disclaimer. I can stress this enough. I'm not an expert. Everything I'm about to show you comes from trial and error, and yeah, blowing up a few devices. So if you decide to try any of this, take proper precautions. I'm not responsible for any fires, damage, or injuries if things go sideways. Okay, maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but sadly, I speak from experience, so you've been warned. And if you're watching this and you're an expert, and you want to share with us, please leave a comment below. Okay, let's start. The first thing you need to know when trying to revive any vintage camera is the voltage it requires and how much current it draws. Usually this information is written somewhere on the camera, on the original battery, or can be easily found online. But what exactly does voltage and current mean? Don't worry, I'm not gonna give you a boring electronics lecture, because I can't, but I'll quickly explain this concept in the simplest way I know. Think of electricity like water flowing through a hose. Voltage is like water pressure. It is the force pushing water through the hose. Current is the amount of water actually flowing. Specifically for the JVC GRC7, the camera clearly states it needs 9.6 volts and consumes 8 watts. This means if we provide less than 9.6 volt, the camera simply won't turn on. And if we give it more, we might fry it and cause permanent damage. But what about those 8 watts? Watts indicate the total amount of energy the camera consumes when it's running. Think of it as the total amount of effort the camera makes while it's turned on. To solve this problem in the easiest way possible, I just searched in Amazon for a 9.6 volts battery and found the perfect one, originally made for remote control cars. Now, the original battery for the camera is rated at 9.6 volt and 1000 mA capacity. The one I found is 2000 mA. Is this dangerous? Nope. The number in mA simply refers to the battery's capacity or how long it can supply power before it runs out. Let me break it down simply. If the original 1000 mA battery lasted about an hour, you can expect roughly twice that duration, around 2 hours. It's that simple. Yes, this is the quickest solution. But in future videos, I will show you how I'll build my own batteries from scratch, using affordable or recycled cells. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Continuing with the battery I found, it only cost $16, which seems like a fair price to me. As you can see, the connector is not compatible with the camera, so all I need to do is replace it with the correct connector. In this case, it's a 5.5mm male connector. You can buy this for very cheap, but honestly, there's a comment that you probably have a spare cable lying around your house, just like I did. The most crucial step here is respecting the polarity. The camera itself clearly shows the correct polarity in this diagram. The center pin is positive and the outer part is negative. If you're unsure, you can always verify it with a multimeter. This step is essential to avoid damaging your camera. Always respect polarity. 
Safety tip, if you're testing polarity directly from the connector, never never touch the two multimeter probes together. Doing so will cause a short circuit and could make the battery overheat and you don't want that. So if you're unsure, please avoid this. Here, you can see I've already soldered the connector, but if you're anything like me, this solution might seem not very elegant. So today, let's do something more interesting. For what we are about to do, you will need an original, non-working battery. For example, this one came with the camera I bought, and as you can see, the new battery is almost exactly the same size. Spoiler alert, it fits perfectly inside the shell of the old battery. By replacing the old cells with this new one, we can elegantly reuse it as if it were an original battery, without any cables sticking out or anything weird. By the way, this is not a coincidence. You can do this with most vintage batteries since they typically contain cells of similar sizes inside. But wait, at this point you might be wondering, how are we going to charge the battery? Well, before we get into that, it's important to talk briefly about the two most common types of rechargeable batteries, NIMB and lithium-ion, and why using the correct charger matters a lot. Each type has a different charging method, their chemistry is different, and they're not interchangeable. I won't go too deep into the technical stuff, but here's what you really need to know. If you charge a lithium-ion battery with the wrong charger, it can overheat or even catch fire. And if you charge a NIMB battery with a lithium-ion charger, it can leak, get damaged, stop working, or so much worse. Now, just so you know, some very old cameras, specifically VHS or early camcorders, used nickel-cadmium batteries, or NICD. These are a bit different, and while they're less common today, they still show up in some retro gear. Just like NIMB and lithium-ion, they also require their own specific charger. For example, the battery in this project was originally NICD, but I'm replacing the old cells with NIMB. That means using the original camera charger will be a serious mistake, since it's not designed for NIMB chemistry. To fix that, I simply went on Amazon, bought a charger made specifically for NIMB batteries, and installed a female jack on the battery pack to make charging easier and safer. So yeah, this matters. There are other battery types out there too, but today's worth focusing on the most common ones, and my recommendation is simple. Use the charger that came with your battery if possible, and make sure it matches the battery type whether it's NIMB, lithium-ion, or NICD. Just check the label and make sure it's a right match. That small step can prevent accidents. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the old battery. What's worked best for me is my mini rotary tool. I just slightly weaken the seam around the middle, then focus on the corners. It's much easier to separate the two halves of the shell by applying pressure with a flathead screwdriver. Just puncturing a battery can be extremely dangerous. This is very risky, even if you know what you're doing, and I strongly advise against trying it yourself. I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes only. Like you can see, there was some battery fluid leaked inside. These chemical residues can be very harmful to your health, so you should never handle them. I have some experience and take full responsibility for my own actions, but not for anyone else's, so please be careful. Now I just need to remove the old battery cells. To do that, I have to cut these wires, but do it carefully, because they're connected directly to the battery terminals that interface with the camera. If you bend or damage those terminals, you might run into issues later with loose or unreliable connections when inserting the battery back into the camera. Now we can get rid of the old cells, but please make sure to dispose of them properly in a designated battery recycling bin. As you can see, I've already cut off the connector I installed earlier. The red wire is positive, and the black one is negative. But before soldering the wires, we need to make some room, so the new battery fits properly and there's nothing inside the case that could poke or damage it. First, I'm going to remove the larger plastic pieces using some pliers, and then, I will use my mini rotary tool to make the surface as smooth and clean as possible. I did the same thing with the other half of the shell, and as you can see, the battery fits perfectly. 
The next step is to solder a couple of wires to the battery terminals. I will use a black wire for negative and a red one for positive. If you're not sure what terminal is which, don't worry. In most batteries, the polarity is marked, and in this case, it's labeled on the outside of the shell. And this is how it turned out. Looking good. Now it's time to secure the battery inside the shell. You can totally use hot glue for this but I'm going with a bit of double-sided tape. It's super strong. I have used it in a bunch of other projects and honestly, it never lets me down. Now I'm going to solder the battery wires to the wires I previously connected to the battery terminals inside the shell. That way, the terminals will get power directly from the new battery. To do this, I'm not cutting the terminal wire completely just making a small opening in the insulation so I can solder onto it. What matters is that everything stay connected, the battery terminals, the wires from the new battery, and one extra wire that will go to the DC jack that we're going to use to charge it. Always make sure to match the polarity. Once everything is soldered, I will use heat shrink tubing to insulate the connections and keep things safe and clean. To make sure everything is connected correctly, I'm going to use my multimeter in voltage mode. I'll check both the wires going to the DC jack and the battery terminals. If the multimeter shows the battery voltage on the screen, then we're good to go. Now let's do a quick test. Connect the battery to the camera and... It powers on perfectly. Awesome. Now it's time to install the DC jack so we can charge the battery. After thinking about a few placement options, I think this spot is just right. The jack fits perfectly and doesn't get in the way at all. So I'm going to make a small hole using my mini drill. Now it's time to connect the wires to the DC jack. The most important thing to know is the short pin is positive and the long one is negative. Polarity really matters here. Once the connector is in place, make sure it's nice and snug. I even added a bit of hot glue just to be extra sure it will never come loose. Alright, now we can go ahead and solder the wires. Just make sure the respect to polarity. I use heat shrink tubing for extra safety. And that's it for all the soldering and wiring we're doing today. As you can see, everything looks pretty clean. We have got the battery installed and the charging jack in place and ready to go. But is it really charging the battery? Let's do a test. Now I'm going to plug the charger into the new charging port, and if the red LED turns on, we're good to go. And... nice, it works! Now we can go ahead and close up the battery case. What I like to do is add a bit of hot glue around the edges of the case. Once it dries, I just peel off the excess, and as you can see, it looks really clean. But for extra durability, I like to go one step further and use Gorilla Tape. I've used it in lots of my projects. It never comes off, and it gives the whole thing a nice clean finish. And there you have it! A fully functional battery that looks almost like the original. Like I said at the beginning, this is part of a video series all about vintage batteries, and I think this was probably the easiest method to start with. Please support this little channel so it can keep growing. Drop a like, leave a comment, and if you see long-term value in this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.